When Nuclear Strike was released to bring back the ailing franchise for modern times, it was something of a letdown in places. Whilst I spent hours playing Desert Strike on the Mega Drive with my dad, Nuclear Strike didn't grab us in the same way that we were hoping. The mechanics hadn't moved on from the 16-bit era, despite the game looking fantastic in contrast. Jump forward another year, and this time it was 3DO who were taking a stab at making a helicopter combat game with their trusted army men franchise. They set out to take all the best aspects of the Strike series of games and make a faster, more accessible game at the same time. What we were left with was a fast, action-packed shooter which sways more into arcade territory than many were expecting, and it manages to do just about enough to separate itself from the more simulation stylings of Nuclear Strike. That certainly isn't a bad thing. I love games which are easy to pick up and play, and within minutes of playing Army Men Air Combat, you'll get the game, and with very little in the way of a tutorial, you'll be working your way through what turns out to be quite a solid single-player campaign. For those who don't remember Army Men, then in my childhood, they were little bags of green and tan coloured soldiers which you'd buy in huge bags, sometimes with hundreds of each, and reenact wars and so on with them. With the politically correct world we now live in, I haven't seen them on store shelves in years. I guess war related kids toys just aren't cool anymore. Not to mention I'm sure that so many kids nearly lost eyes poking themselves with their army men's machine guns or choking to death after swallowing them. But I digress. The theme of the army men games is the make believe war between the green coloured good guy soldiers and the tan coloured ones who are the bad guys. In air combat you take control of a choice between four helicopters and control the action from the skies as you shoot, explode and run rescue missions across 16 levels over an arching storyline. As the game is based on a real scale, the environments are all huge and it's not uncommon to have giant insects and bugs either help or hinder you during your missions. The range of environments is slightly disappointing however, most of the main game's missions take place in the garden environment and it's only in the later missions that the game really shows any variety. They all look great and there's some nice detail and lighting effects at times, but the overall look of the game can be quite bland. With such a great premise to the game, it would have been more enjoyable to have had at least some missions take place indoors to mix things up. One area of the gameplay where the game really delivers is in its firepower. Whilst there are only four choppers to choose from, they come packed with some great weaponry. The Z button fires your machine guns which auto-targets enemies when you get close enough but you have a range of more powerful attacks in the form of missiles which do the most damage. Whereas Nuclear Strike force you to ration your firepower, Army Men Air Combat wants you to turn the battle zones into Vietnam, as almost every turn there are more crates of health and ammo. You can even call in kamikaze soldiers which come complete with awesome audio, which will charge at the enemy and blow themselves up. The first few missions are an absolute breeze and nicely guide you into the game, but from around mission 5 onwards things start to get a lot tougher, and you'll need to learn tactics for your encounters with the enemies. It doesn't ever drift too far from the arcade feel of the game, but the enemy firepower takes a serious upgrade and the AI is actually pretty decent, which will result in some quick deaths, especially as some of the levels start you off right in the midst of the action. Graphically however the game takes a turn for the worst. Anything that moves in the game is animated poorly, and there are clearly a lack of frames in much of the movements. Enemies, objects and bases all stick out like a sore thumb due to their ugly textures which laid on top of some decent looking terrain. This does make it easy to spot enemies and it keeps the game flowing, but with the expansion pack support you would have expected a whole lot more from the game. The limited animation I think is in part due to the game's great frame rate. Even with multiple explosions and lots of enemies on screen, the game doesn't drop a frame for a second so for an arcade style game this is one trade off that I think is really welcome here. Another area of the game which is perfect is the controls. The analogue stick combined with the strafe of the C buttons means you'll quickly be dogfighting with accuracy in no time at all. The two simple attack buttons means you won't be bogged down trying to switch between weapons in the middle of a battle. And the winch is fast and snappy, unlike the slow plod which nuclear strikes picked up crates with. The sound is also solid with lots of crisp voices and lines of dialogue which don't become annoying or detract from the game. The mission music is the usual slightly dull generic rock inspired tracks, but with so many awesome sounding explosions taking place, you'll rarely even realise it's playing. In a nice touch for the missions where there are multiple objectives, you'll get radio messages telling you what to do next. Finally, the game has a somewhat unbalanced multiplayer. You can play deathmatches in 4 player mode which personally were never that interesting for me. 
but for the main fun of the game, you can have this by going through the entire single player campaign in co-op mode. Taking on the entire game with a friend makes things far much easier, and there's something satisfying about teaming up with a friend and blasting your way through it together. I feel that all of the Army Men games on N64 are overlooked and quite unfairly. Sure, they're never going to be the games everyone raves about even to this day, but what I can say is that Army Men Air Combat is a very unique game for the system, and anyone who loves a good chopper game but was underwhelmed by nuclear strikes should definitely check this one out. The game was released during a bit of a dry spot for the N64. Perhaps it was perfect timing really, as the game had a breathing space, but by this point many N64 owners were starting to abandon the system, and so perhaps for many, the game was already dated by the time it was released. As always, I want to know how you feel about it. Did you pick this up one weekend, waiting to kill a few weeks, whilst nothing much else was coming out on the system? Or were you reluctant to pick it up with some solid Nintendo games arriving just around the corner? This would have been a great weekend rental, I think, so perhaps you did just that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time.